Okay, the first technique is five storms, and I'm going to teach it to you two different ways. Now, with the help of Cliff, first we're going to start it out with weapons, meaning the sticks against natural weapons. Cliff's going to step through with a right roundhouse punch. Now, I'm going to step back, and I'm going to anchor my elbow and whip this into action as I block and strike. Every strike, every block is a strike, and every strike is a block. The bottom hand is also going to take out his knee as he steps through. Now, this shows you the range of the weapons as opposed to just the hands. And that's one great advantage to have a weapon like this. So when Cliff comes in again, we get both the knee and the arm. Now, I check that arm and I move forward into Cliff with a shuffle and I strike to the side of the neck, hitting the carotid artery. At this point, I can go to the ribs, or if he turns towards me a little bit, I can check and go to the solar plexus, and by checking, just anchoring my, my initial strike here to the neck, and then taking the left arm, thrusting it, driving it into him, and then driving underneath. Now, you notice this hand comes on top to check. So if the arms do come up, you know, we can check those arms down. Now, I'm going to redirect my angles of delivery and get off to the side of Cliff. As I move up the circle, I'm going to strike this side of the neck. Now, if Cliff decides to step through or come towards me with his right arm again, I can anchor with this hand. The idea, though, is to get his head to go down, and then we're going to cross in and hammer to the back of the head or the neck. Now, I can do it just with stick to neck or stick to stick, which causes a tremendous concussion all the way through the body. This is a, a unique characteristic of this particular weapon. It's very seldom seen where people actually hit the stick that's already locked on target. After I hit here and I move out, if he moves towards me like a tackle, then I take the bottom hand and hit the elbow and the side of the head as I cover away from the action. Now, you've got to remember that since you're using a, a, a hard weapon, you don't have to go to soft targets. You can change that. You can now go to hard targets, okay? You can go to the skull. You can go to the hinge of the jaw with a, without injury, worrying about injury to yourself. Now, particularly when we came around towards the end of this technique and he continued to follow, that allowed me to check here and hit the bone across the wrist and hit the elbow to hit the bones here to break. I don't have to go to tissue at this point, but I can stay bone to bone. Okay, so this is something else that you want to remember, and which I'm going to show you in the, in the next version of this technique as well. All right, now Cliff has sticks, so it's like for like, so to speak. Now, th what happens here is if Cliff swings, depends upon his, his experience. If he's experienced with the sticks, and he comes in and he swings one high, you may be able to catch the stick, or you may be able to catch the fingers initially. If he goes one and two comes in trying to hit me in the knee as well, then I may get my block in low or high enough to get, again, the hands, all right? But in either case, if I miss the hands initially and go one, two, it's the same block as we already had, but I can get him to drop by bringing these up and breaking the fingers and opening Cliff up and then move in with the same pattern that I had before. Nothing changes, just the initial move to take in consideration of the weapons involved. Let's try that again, Cliff. We'll slow it down a little bit. But as Cliff came in, I took in consideration that I may not be able to reach and I may be overcommitted. So I just took the sticks. But before Cliff pulled back, I made sure that I came up and a downward, a downward action here and an upward action here to clear it. And that also opened him up and allowed me to move in at the same time. So as you learn a technique, learn it both ways. Learn it stick to stick, stick to hands. Okay, the next technique, number two, is reversing storms or reversing mace, okay? Now with the help of click, this is with hands and stick, okay? Now as I start in a right neutral bow, I have one hand low and one hand high. As Cliff starts to move in, notice the sticks start to shift. They, are, they trade places. One goes low, one goes high. So as I parry here, I get a possible, keep moving in with the action, I get a possible strike to the back of the leg or to the knee with the bottom hand as well. It's very elusive because I have one, it doesn't look like this is going to drop in, but as he moves across, 
I step off, I move up the circle, make my strike, double parry, as you guys already know, and then from here, catch the ribs. But I don't have to go to the ribs. I can now go to the bone, which is the top part of the hip. And that sends a concussion all the way down through the leg. It's extremely painful. It has a deadening effect as well. So when you come off of there, hit this action. As his hand goes down, the stick could get trapped. If that happens, you check with the top hand, hit the knee with the bottom hand, okay, and he's going to want to try to come up. If he does try to come up again, you have this other hand coming over the top. Now, on a, mo a more basic level, you'll see it like this. This hand comes over and makes a full circle to check that arm down as this one comes up and hits, all right? But on a more sophisticated level in this tape, I want you to watch where this goes and hits the knees. And if I need to pull this stick out, I can do it by striking the forearm and across both arms. All right, at this point, I can slide up and anchor down using this as leverage here. Now, this controls his height. If he tries to kick or move towards me, that controls all that. If he tries to punch me, it controls the width. If he tries to dive in and tackle me, it controls that as well. You see how that crosses across that arm if he comes in. Okay, now watch again. We step off, double parry, make our shots, circle around, check, hit, anchor. Now, again, to cross-check him, I'm going to sweep his leg as I hit that arm at the elbow. And as I come out of that sweep, I have one last shot open for him here, breaking the bridge of the nose. If Cliffs decides to grab both hands on the stick to pull it free, then I go to the hands themselves. I step out, make a sweeping cover, both the head and the inside of the right knee as I step away from my opponent. Thank you, Cliff. Good. Now, Cliff, if he has weapons, a weapon, again, how he tacks is going to be a little different if he's familiar with the sticks. Go ahead, Cliff. He may come across from the bottom up to hit me, follow through with another hit, and try to come across with the right hand. What I'm going to do is try to grab the, hit the knuckles here and get him to drop it by hitting the, the arm at the back of the wrist again and a stick. All right, now, if I want to go to the ribs, but he still comes in with that right arm, I could still go both, except the ribs, this becomes a check, and this becomes a check. So I'm just altering my technique a little bit and anchoring down and still staying within the what? And with the pattern, okay? But I had to alter it a little bit. Now, if I can get there quick enough on the first move and, and catch him here, then I don't have to worry so much about the other, because if he tries to bring the other in, I've got this anchored anyway, and cross in and get him to what? To release it. I can go all the way across, hit that bone, and get him to stop it. And again, I can use the lower case on my way out to check and anchor him down <coughs> just by dropping the lower case. That's the pattern of that technique. Thank you, Cliff. Next technique is repeating store. Okay, now with the help of one, we're going to take it with stick to hands first, and then we'll have one attack me with the stick. So we get a different uh, uh, setup for this type of thing. Now, when he, one reaches for me, generally it's for a push. Okay, but I'm going to accelerate, and a, a accelerated push becomes a what? A punch. All right, so as he punches, I'm going to step up the circle. I'm going to move off. If one is 12 o'clock, I'm going to move off to 4 o'clock. Let's come over from here, one. I'm going to step up the circle, redirect it with an outward parry. Now, this hand is going to be hanging. And the way it's going to work is that it's going to, I'm going to move out so that you can see what I'm doing, is that I'm going to use a figure eight down at this level. I'm going to hit the back of the knee and the front of the knee. At this point, I'm going to flip this over and hit the elbow. And also, that will not only injure the arm, but it will check the width at this point. And as I check the width so that his right punch is negated, then I loop this back and catch the back of his head at the same time. So as I loop this down here with the figure eight, if he starts to shoot a right, I quickly turn it and negate that right punch, catch the back of the head. Now I come back, 
and I catch the back of the leg, and I can use my, uh, my stick and my foot what? at the same time. They both work together. They both sweep together. Still keeping the check at this point, I step out, make my cover, and hit the knee, and cross out facing one. Now, when I crossed out, I did two overlapping circles. Okay. Now, watch again. I move up the circle and parry. Even on the parry, what's interesting is that when you're with the hand, you have a, sh a different range of vantage compared to the stick. With the stick, not only do I get the parry, but I get the strike as well. Okay? So I can use the lower case to parry and the upper case to make the hit and then work down at these levels, sweep, make the hit, check, and overlapping circles to check one ability to come back after me. Now, that's with stick to one's hands. Let's do it with the sticks. All right, now we're going to deal with stick to stick, okay? Now, one comes through with a stick, basically the same attack, but I've got to be concerned with the range of those sticks. So even if I move up the circle, I'm going to try and parry, possibly to get a hit, but I want to try and get him released. If he doesn't release on a shot like this, when I hit the back of the knee, he may release it at this point on my way back down. Now, if one does manage to circle around towards me and bring that stick into play, then I have a parry or check here by just flipping this over, and also it's simultaneous with a strike behind him. And then I go ahead and make my Whoa. sweep, and if he's still holding on to that club, I catch it on the way out. I scissor it with both hands. All right, now let's try this again, and I'm going to repeat what we just did before. Watch closely as I move up the circle. I try to get one to release it here. If he doesn't, then I get him on the back swing of the figure eight to get him to release it here and still get my strike. If he decides to move with his right arm at this point, I meet that action, and then I circle back because that left arm, I still have a line of entry at this point. So before that comes in, I circle yes. it because I want to catch it on the way out as well. Now, all these things you have to be concerned with. And now, what I'm doing is what I'm working with one is I'm striking not the soft tissue, but I'm hitting this hard stick to the bone. All right, that's the difference. I don't have to go, like I said before, go to soft tissue. But the pattern itself in, the, uh, in these techniques gives you a fail safe. And that is, watch it again. Remember, I couldn't get him to release. I got him to release here, but he came back with the other move. I want to close off that line of entry. Even though he got hit, if he decided to come back in, then I'm going to hit the elbow. And as the elbow gets hit, he gets swept to negate that right side again to check his width. And he also gets hit in the head as I move on out. And this scissor effect that I used previously, now I'm going to use it on the, front, uh, the whole front of the body at this point as I move out. Thank you, Juan. Good. All right, the next technique is called clashing storms. Okay, with the help of John. John's going to step through with a right kick, and then he's going to follow that up with a right punch. We'll do it without any weapons in his hands first. What I'm going to do is I'm going to start in a right neutral bow. As the kick comes, I'm going to block the kick as I step back. And then as the punch comes, I'm going to scissor it, or what we call clashing the storms. It's when the storms meet, you scissor that elbow. All right? At this point, it should raise him right up on his toes just from the pain. Now I'm going to step on through, and I want you to watch my right hand. As it hits the throat, it anchors and sets the head up for the next strike as I step through. All right. At this point, I step behind him, and I keep him anchored down because I don't want to get a back kick. I want to check his height so he can't raise his leg. But I come around, and I'm going to attack that elbow right there, and I'll show you why a little later. I'm going to hit the elbow. I'm going to rear crossover, hit the head, and it should spin him. And as it spins him, it allows me to clash the storms at this angle, bring the head back, check, and hit it again. And again, just like playing ball, we're bouncing this back and forth. And that's the pattern that we're going to be using. And then cross out. OK? All right, now with the sticks, what I want to do is I want to disarm him as well as uh, cause injury to him. Now, as he moves on the, on the kick, I'm going to hit that knee joint. I'm going to unwind and then clip clip the elbow to get him to release that club. Okay, now I'm going to slide back up, make my shot here, anchor. If he's still holding onto that club and that left arm, then I'm going to come around to the elbow, whap, get him to drop the club. 
continue to bring it around, and then use, utilize the same pattern that I did before, and then check out. Good. Thank you, John. All right, the next technique is gathering storms. Now, with the help of one, I'm going to start this in a left neutral bow. I'm going to have one hand down, okay? Now, as one moves in with the strike, I'm going to parry, but I'm going to try to parry up the arm, from the back of the arm all the way up to get him to release that club. All right, let's do it again, one. And if I can manage to do that as I make my, stri <laughs> make my strike, then all the better, okay? I'm going to let it pass through but as I let it pass through, I check as I come back and hit the kidney. All right, now, if one, if that isn't enough and he manages to come around my check here, then I'm going to hit the head with the left club, the right club, check, and hit. I'm going to cross back up the circle and get him to free. If he's still holding on to the club or if his hands come up again, is, is he wipe and get rid of both arms at this point. At this point now, I cross out and sweep the inside of the leg and clutch the neck and the elbow, the head on the way out. Keep my guard up. Thank you, Juan. Next technique is flashing storms, and you guys know it as flashing mace. Now, what we're going to do, as the punch comes, we're going to start in a neutral bow, and that when we move, I'm going to step off and block and break at the same time and try to get him up on his toes on this action. So right as I get to about to this point here, just loop this in, okay, and I'm going to hit that bone right here, okay, so I'm going to change the target. I'm going to hit, hit the top of the hip joint at this point, step on through, come back, hit the ribs, and hit the elbow. Now as that check comes through, I come down and hit the full face of the head all the way down and rake. And I loop it back up, make my shot, check again, come over to the side of the head, and then I can begin, if I hit him hard enough and he's still on his feet, come on around, then I can hit him on the way out as well as I cross. And again, check. Okay, let's do it again. So as we move up, make the shot, spin, double check, and now this can go all the way down to the groin as well without me looking from this angle. And if you need to check that, that line of entry as well, you can move your knee in and make your shot and step off and make it. See how the check rolls around? And so forth. And cross out. Thank you. All right, the next technique is whirling storms, okay, with the help of John. Okay, now what John's going to do is he's going to strike with the right and then we're going to a little scenario here is where he's going to follow it up with the right. Now what we're going to do, we're going to block it like five swords. When the right comes in, we're going to meet that action, both at the wrist and at the elbow. Now, as soon as this hits, we drop it down to hit the knee. We come to the back of the head. If the right arm comes up again, we catch it. Go ahead, bring it around here. And you notice that I can rotate this into a check and sweep on my way out. And as I come through, come across the chest. Okay. All right, watch again. So I meet it, I roll it, hit the head, and if I need to come back for that arm, I bottom check this hand. Okay, I bring this over his head, and at this point I begin my sweeps and make my strike to the sternum or the bridge of the nose on the way out. If he's still on his feet by then, then you know how to cover as we move. Okay? Thank you, John. All right, the next technique is called destructive storms. All right, with the help of one, it's coming from my left flank. I'm going to step off and parry right at the elbow and try to hit the knee with the bottom hand. And then I'm going to circle them both, okay, and close that circle up. Now, at this point, I'm going to catch his elbow here and possibly catch the head on the way out as I sweep. And you notice that in Kempo, we use our natural weapons with our man-made weapons. Okay, don't forget that. As I cross out, I spin out of my twist stance, I'm going to hit the kidney, and I'm going to hit the top of the shoulder at this point, and possibly sweep his leg as well. 
Now, this acts as a check. So I can come in and hit to the groin, push with my knee, and that sends him down and also hit the back of the head. If I start to move away and I see him come up, instead of crossing out, I can meet that action with both sticks on my way out as well. Okay, now, with the sticks, what we're going to do is one moves in, I want to get both sticks at this point. Okay, I want to get both arms and then roll this in. If you haven't let go of this one, then I'm going to interlock him at this point to get him to let go. And this can break the arm as well. Unwind, go back to the same action before, and out. All right, now let's do a little close-up of what I did with that interlocking triangle. When one came in and we got to this point, all I did was cross the right over the left. Now, what happens is they both act as fulcrums against each other. I got a fulcrum up on one's wrist and then on the top of the stick. So I can get him to release, but it also can, it can snap his elbow and it controls his height. And then when I sweep, I can still control him. That gives me more time to get around before I release and make my shot. In fact, if I wanted to open in the triangle here, all right, and if he grabs on, with, let's say he grabs on with both hands, watch what, the more you grab on, the worse it gets for you. And then if I wind it up like this, I'm always using that open in the triangle. Even if he comes up at from, from here, I can make it fit. And again, if he holds on, it's worse than if he would just let go. Okay. We'll learn a little more about this as we go along. Thank you, Juan. All right, the next technique is shield and storm. All right, with the help of one, it's just like shield and mace to an extent, but I got greater range. I ha don't have to commit myself so close to one on this. So as he punches and I block it, I'm going to strike the ribs at this point. Okay, it's going to check his depth too. Then I'm going to hit the bridge of the nose, check down the arm, and then I'm going to hit the arm and the face at the same time use, using the middle case and the upper case. Then I'm going to come down at this point and hit, hit the top part of the hip joint, come around and hit the head again, and drop down and hit the back of the knee and still check. That's going to turn one and going to allow me to come in with my side kick and then cross out. Okay, watch again. <laughs> when I move, I both move at the same time. Now, if I want to hook this in here, as we've done before, I can do that as well, which keeps one in check, not only for that move, but That's for it. this move as well. So I can repeat it, and then come down and hit the leg as well. Try it both ways, see how it works out for you. All right, now, I'm going to elaborate on this technique a little further, and I want you to watch what I do with the sticks. Knowing that he has two sticks, if I make my initial move from here, all right, and I want him to, to release both sticks, I can use open end triangle, one to reach all the way around and catch his elbow, catch the wrist here, ah! and the elbow here. So that shows you what range can do when you have the right weapon. Now, now we can continue on and can, with the same pattern, the same basic pattern, and so forth. So think in terms of what your stick can do for, for you as far as rage. I don't have to know where that elbow is. I don't have to see it. I know where it is by I know where this shoulder is. So if I hit the wrist up here to get him to drop this one, I know this one will wrap around and hit that elbow to get him to drop it. Thank you, Juan. OK, with the help of John. We'll use this for a rear choke because it'll facilitate an idea and I'll show you how these can be used in a, in a twirling type of situation, okay? With both sticks down, if I have a choke from behind and I pivot in place, this hits the elbow and this hits the ribs, all right, as I go into my twist stance. So as I move from him here, this now catches across the chin and anchors him and allows me to right myself in position to either hit again and anchor here or check right across the body and then two strikes, one inward and one outward. But notice that the sticks now become parallel to each other at this point. Now, when you do this, you can spin and use your arm and let this hit the head. Or you can just use them both this way and then make your check. But any time that you guys have 
an open-ended triangle. Now, when I say not just the sticks are an open-ended triangle, but here is an open-ended triangle. That's a triangle right in here. Any time you see that on any part of the body, then you, you can take advantage of it and use it. Okay? If he tries to punch with the left, it isn't going to go past that. If he tries to get up, it's briefly containing all that. Now, as I step back, I still have this to, to wipe and clear as I come in and release and check. Now I'm checking his height, width, and depth again, but just in a different fashion. This is a pinning and riding check. And then I make a <laughs> strike here and back again. All right? And so forth. Thank you, John. All right, this is the next technique. With the help of one, right? All wow. the way across to grab that left arm this time. I'm not keeping it so close, but I'm going to take advantage of the range of this, of this stick. All right, now again, I'm going to sweep. And as I come out of this thing, one is going to dodge my sweeps, and he's going to come back in after me. If he does and a tackle, I'm going to meet that action and hit these two points just above the groin here. If he grabs on and he does let go, then I'm just going to interlace my sticks, and the leverage that you create here will literally break, ah. his, break his ribs. And I'm only using about eight pounds of pressure here to snap the ribs. If I raise these up and come down on his forearms, not only now I'm going to break the, the arms, but my knee comes in ah. and finishes the job as well. Okay? Good. Watch again. Again, if I thought something was coming out of that side, I can go all the way across to meet that action. Also, I have the options here to the scissor on my sweep as well. Like I said, if he dodges it and he moves in, then I can meet that action. I can go ahead and interlace at this point and then snap the ribs. And then just raise him up, bring him down on the arms. It checks his height. It's a good control technique. If I bring my knee in there, it acts as leverage. And you notice that the sticks at this point can move one up to the neck and one to his ribs as I finish it. Thank you, Juan. Good. So now you're learning how to get a lot of leverage out of a simple weapon like this. All right, the next technique is called crisscrossing the storms with the help of John. Now what I'm going to do here is go to a left 45 degree cat stance and I'm going to use an open-ended triangle as he makes a low attempt to grab or to tackle this way. Now, if the hands want to come back up, we get them back down. All right, watch that again. He moves in, go one, two. Now I snap kick to the groin, then to the jaw, and as the head goes back, I crisscross again. And if I hit him again, as I reverse that action, it clears the arms a second time. Now, if John starts to move in towards me, then I meet that action, to start to send him off on a 45 degree angle so his, his width is checked, but I'm also now in an uh, obscure zone, all right? I didn't have to move myself up the circle to get into an obscure zone. I moved him into an obscure zone. It's something to think about in your training. Once I hit him here, I cross in and let his head meet this action as this hits the leg and the groin, and I take out his leg. Now, at this point, if he grabs my stick, in desperation, then I've got to break that grab by hitting it this way. That releases it, and as I step away, if I see him returning, then I meet him again. Again, check him, and hit, come across, hit, and step. And notice that these are overlapping figure eights, and one always acts as a check as you move across. Thank you, John. technique is thundering storms. As you know it is thundering hammers. I'm going to show you two versions of it so that you get an idea on the second version of how the sticks can interlace at all angles, at all levels, in all dimensions. Okay, one. We're going to do the standard block, inward block at this point, and try to get, get him to release if he's holding onto a stick. Okay, watch again. But as we do it, you notice that this coming back also has an effect as well. It has meaning as this hits. Now, from this, I roundhouse to the back of the knee and then come underneath. But if he grabs onto it, that's all right, because I can, I can 
use that as a fulcrum and come back and hit him in the ribs. Now, if he, if he grabs onto that, he's interlaced, and now the breaks start to take place. And notice now I'm going to go after the knee instead of the head. Now, in the standard version, we block roundhouse kick, hit the groin or solar plexus, come over the top. And you can come over the top with a stick or with the middle range of the stick, or you can use the bottom part to hit. Okay. Now, if you use the bottom, then you're going to get two because it's hit. And as this hits again, your knee will also check the leg, and the kidney will be hit. We roll the check over like you guys already know. Now, this rolling effect, if one turns, we can lock on to that turn and use it to our advantage. So if he grabs that stick, which is a normal reaction out of him, I can go after his ankle here and also break the arm at the top as well. All right, so what happens in effect, thank you, Juan, is the pattern remains the same. The targets change depending upon the reaction of your opponent. Okay, so the, don't be subordinate to the targets. All right, you learn different targeting to give you, to facilitate an idea. But as you practice these, think of the reaction out of your opponent. How one is reacting now, he could react differently the next time I do it as well. All right, the next technique is Leaping Storm with the help of John. Now, I'm really going to take advantage of this range. Normally, when a guy comes in with a strike from here and we do the technique, we have to get pretty deep to make this middle knuckle hit, all right? But what we're going to do is we're going to stay way out of range and allow this to work for us. All right, now I make my side kick and I come down and attack the kidney and the elbow, okay? And you notice as that gets hit, this gets hit as well. Now, I cross, I step over, and if I see, see him start to turn towards me from that hit, then I catch him again. As I step back to create range, and he comes in, come on, keep on coming, I can check him with that open-ended lock. And then I just twist up, make my hit, make sure that I clean the area on my way out with a scissors, and it makes it safer for me to get out. Okay, let's do it again for him, John. All right, so as it moves, let me bam, bam, kick, pop. And I see him chasing after me. And then these checks work for me real nicely. They stop him right in his tracks. And then move, and then, and then out. Thank you, John. Good. OK. Now, up to this point, you've learned a lot about what the sticks can do. But what's important is that you investigate this for yourself. Now, these are ideas, they're not rules to go by, but these will cover enough territory so that as you learn these techniques, you can become self-taught at all levels with this. Just remember to adhere to the Kempo concepts and principles, and you're more than halfway there.